So <laughs> crazy. You I got, would never you got lucky that. with the, the warm <laughs> job. Chris, have you ever taken the plunge? Uh, no, but I admire Kenton's intelligence for the MC <laughs> honors. That's the way to be involved. What usually is for a charitable cause, of course. Of course. I guess that's my cue to go ahead. Not to plunge. Let's just plunge into the show, Emily. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sophie Cunningham. Boy, has she accomplished a lot at Mizzou. She's still going strong. Her senior season will have highlights of her big day against Auburn today. Plus, it may not be the Super Bowl, but many Chiefs at least made it to the Pro Bowl. Your last chance to see Patrick Mahomes until the summertime. And the Big 12 looks to bounce back against the SEC after losing the Big 12 SEC Challenge for the first time a year ago. All this and more coming next on Sports Extra. Hi there, welcome to our show. Thank you for being with us tonight. Hope you've had a great weekend. We have a big show. We'll talk a lot about the Missouri women's basketball team after a huge week for that squad. Also an inspirational story about a local Kansas City Chiefs fan, so stay tuned for that. But we do begin with a Missouri Tiger women's basketball. The Tigers had a big week. They suffered back-to-back -back road losses to ranked teams South Carolina and Kentucky. And then today, back home against Auburn. Much needing a victory and call on number three for that. Sophie Cunningham was just outstanding in this game for Missouri. She was making shots early and often for the Tigers, who raced out to an 18 to nothing lead over Auburn. 18 zip out of the gate. Sophie hitting from long range. And there's the Sophie shimmy. 23 to 2 in favor of Mizzou at the end of the first quarter. Cunningham had a big first half, 21 points. Her teammates were loving it, and she capped it off with a buzzer beater by halftime. And uh, this was a complete mismatch on this day. Missouri's Tigers much better than the Auburn Tigers. Auburn did give Robin Pinchton maybe slight cause for concern in the second half. Auburn jumped within eight in the fourth quarter. Got no closer, though. They might have had they hit their free throws. But Cunningham with 30, now third on the all-time scoring list as Missouri beats Auburn 74-65. I play uh, best when I'm feisty, and um, I, I just want to protect this program, and, and we do things the right, right, the right way around here, and uh, when we're hitting our shots like that, and, and we have such a great fan base, and they showed up again, uh, so thank you. Nobody's surprised at Sophie. She's a very good player. I mean, we all know she's one of the best players in the SEC, so no, I'm not surprised at all. I didn't want her to have 21 at the half, but I'm not surprised at how, how good she is. A lot more on Sophie and her historic career coming in a few minutes. But how about the Mizzou men on Saturday? Jordan Geist and the Tigers so good for so long. 38 minutes against LSU. Geist had season-high 25 points, career-high 11 rebounds. Jeremiah Tillman, 15 points, 6 rebounds, played 35 minutes. And Mizzou up 14 with just more than two minutes to go. And amazingly, the Tigers of Mizzou did not come away with a victory. LSU's sizzling. Skyler Mays had three three-point plays in the final couple of minutes, two three-point shots and a conventional three-point play. And he and LSU got it to overtime, and then they took over. 86-80. LSU, a remarkable win, but a heartbreaking loss for Mizzou. Key turnovers. I thought a couple times we held the ball too long instead of giving the ball up. Ben, you don't want to be passive. You want to, Javon did a good job of driving, but he should have jump stop on that pass. He tried to hit Kevin with, and that was a turnover. But you know, it's it's it's, it's a hard hard pill to swallow. And hopefully, it's one we can learn from and never have to witness again. But you never assume the game is over until it's over. I mean, they just put a little more pressure, and I think it sped us up. Um, as a senior, I got to make sure that our guys are under control, and you know, especially I got to take care of the ball as well. Well, we're now less than three months from the NFL draft. Drew Locke among the many draft hopefuls at the Senior Bowl this past week in Mobile, Alabama. Saturday, the players took the field for the actual game to show off their possible NFL readiness. Drew Locke started for the North team. And Locke played the entire first quarter as the starting signal caller for the North. Look at him roll out there. and. Get that ball away under duress for a completed pass. Here he'll drop back, pump fake, and sling it over the middle, but uh, no luck on the receiving end. Then lock again with play action rolling right. Little underhanded toss, if you will, a la Patrick Mahomes, perhaps. 
North marching downfield, and that should have been a touchdown pass, but Ohio State's Terry McLaurin couldn't reel it in. Locke uh, completed nine passes for 59 yards. It was one quarter play, and the North did get the victory by 10 points. To Orlando for the current NFL stars, and there's the current Kansas City quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, a week removed from the heartbreaking AFC championship game loss, finds Eric Ebron, the Colts tight end, for a touchdown. Then Mahomes hands off to his Chiefs teammate, Anthony Sherman, who punches it in. AFC up by 14 points and rolled to victory 26-7. Mahomes, offensive MVP. All right, time now for tonight's Sports Extra Sports Trivia question on the topic of women's basketball. Sophie Cunningham moved into third place on the all-time scoring list. We can tell you she's behind only number one, Joni Davis, and number two, Renee Kelly. But who did she pass? to move into the third spot and drop to number four. The answer coming later in our show. Well, the SEC won last year's Big 12 SEC Challenge, but Big 12 Conference teams might have had a bit of revenge on their minds Saturday. Great slate of ball games, 10 head-to-head -head matchups. Mizzou not involved. Of course, the Tigers had a conference game with LSU. But let's get right to the action. The two winningest teams in basketball history, the marquee matchup, Kentucky and Kansas from Rupp Arena in Lexington. Here we go. Big crowd on hand. They seat about 23,000 there at Rupp. It was packed. And you see the Kansas Jayhawks getting off to a good start. Tidrick Lawson there. And then it's Lawson on the drive. KU by seven. But UK storms back. The Kentucky Wildcats on the move. Keldon Johnson for three. And later, Kentucky with the lead. And Johnson... Closely guarded, didn't matter, got the result. Wildcats win over Kansas, 71-63. On to Knoxville, number one ranked Tennessee against the West Virginia Mountaineers. Vols down early, Jordan McCabe to Wesley Harris, who finishes with a big jam, and the Mountaineers by 11 in Knoxville. Vols, though, come back. Admiral Schofield down low, strong move in the post. Between the defenders, puts it up and in. Then it is Grant Williams to Lamonte Turner, back to Williams for two and Tennessee in the second half pulling away Jordan Bowden the steal and jams at home Vols win 83-66 finally Texas Tech and Arkansas down in Lubbock close ball game here Adriel Bailey for the Hogs couple of dribbles pull up jumper is good later in the first half Razorbacks up one but not for long the Italian Davide Moretti open for three for Texas Tech Winding down to the first half, Jalen Harris hits a three. Arkansas by three at the break. But in the second half, Jared Culver leads the Red Raiders back, and they win 67-64. The Big 12 wins this year's challenge, 6-4 over the SEC. Well, a college student from Columbia was given his biggest test in his life, beating cancer. And while he was fighting cancer, he found inspiration from chief safety, Eric Berry, KOMUH Jared Austin tells us how Matt May not only found peace of mind, but a lifelong role model. Every sports team has its diehard fans. I've been a Chiefs fan pretty much since the day I was born. For our 24 years, we have that's kind of been our family thing is to to watch watch the Chiefs on Sunday. And we laugh because literally we used to have this big change bowl and like that game, like we were like, okay, if we have enough money in our change bowl, we're buying tickets. Matt has always enjoyed family time at Arrowhead Stadium. I don't know, there's just something special about being able to go, you know, go to Chiefs games. Matt always wanted to be a middle school teacher, but his focus changed right as he started college. I was a freshman up at Truman and just wasn't feeling great. Came down, got, went to the doctor, got some tests. Matt and his family feared the worst, and those fears became a reality. He was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, a cancer found in the bone marrow. Nothing can, can, can prepare you for you know, being told you have cancer. Cancer forced him to put his dream on hold. With extended time in the hospital, the maze went to the Bible for closure. Our wall right behind there says we know that an all things God works for the good of those who love him, and we've just trusted that. Philippians 121, um, which is for me to live as Christ and to die as gain, which just gave me this overwhelming sense of peace. Even with death in the back of their minds, his family remained positive. It's all a gift, right? Whether he lived or died, it was all a gift. During this stressful time, Matt looked for inspiration in something or someone. 
He found it in Chief Safety Eric Berry. The first day he took treatment was the day that, that Eric Berry signed his long-term contract with the Chiefs. So that was the thing, you know, hey Matt, Eric Berry just signed a long-term contract and he's like, awesome. Chief Safety Eric Berry also put his dream on hold as he was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma in November of 2014. After undergoing treatment, he was cancer-free in June of 2015. Looking over at him when Eric Berry came back from his illness this, this year and got to play, like, there were just tears streaming down his face. With his birthday a month away from his original diagnosis, his family knew exactly what to do. They reached out to a friend of a friend in the Chiefs organization, and they gave him a special gift. Matt, on behalf of the Kansas City Chiefs organization, I would li like to wish you happy birthday. A personal letter from the Chiefs CFO, Dan Crum, and his favorite gift of all. No. Yearbook? No. No, it's fine. They also surprised him with other gifts. Tickets on the floor of the 2018 NFL Draft, the opportunity to hold a cancer flag on the field at halftime, giving thanks to the Chiefs and Eric Berry. Um, you know, just the um, that warrior inspiration that he has. It's uh, it's just a it's an honor to have somebody like him for your kid to look up to. He is such an incredible uh, role model just on the field and off the field, the way he carries himself. And, you know, and just <laughs> to be able to, to see him on the field is just such an incredible, incredible feeling. In Columbia, Jared Austin, KMU8 Sports. Jared, thank you. Matt is making great progress. He's back at school and expects to be cancer-free the end of next month, and we certainly wish him well. We are back right after this break. Welcome back, everyone, and we welcome to our show Brad Trinago of the Tiger Radio Network. He's part of the football broadcast and known very well for his fine work with the Missouri women's basketball team. And thank you for joining us. You've had a very busy week with that ball club, haven't you? Certainly have, yeah. I had the game on the road at South Carolina Monday, at Kentucky Thursday, and then the win against Auburn this afternoon. I thought this would be a challenging week and perhaps in some ways a signature week for Missouri, just in terms of the schedule, uh, big challenge, back-to-back -back road games against uh, ranked opponents, and then the home game today against a good Auburn team. Lost the two on the road, but came back in a big way today and uh, probably feel okay about things after a tough week. Yeah, that was a good way to, to come back after losing. I mean, yeah, it, is, it was back-to-back -back losses for the first time this year, but you're talking about two of the top 20 teams mm -hmm. in the country on the road. So, yeah, to come back against an Auburn team, which I think is also going to make the NCAA tournament and lead 23-2 to <laughs> at the end of the first quarter, that's always an encouraging sign. The three ball was starting to go in a little more often for Mizzou. And, you know, at the end of this stretch, you step back, you go into your bye week, you're halfway through the SEC schedule with a record of five and three, and you're sitting in fifth place. So you're in the top half. It, it looks like the back half of the conference schedule might be a little more manageable now than the front half was, and you've positioned yourself to have still a really solid season. Sure, they still certainly appear to be destined for the NCAA tournament. As you mentioned, halfway through the league at five and three, they play 16 games on the women's side, so now it's the bye week, a full week off, Brad, and then a game at LSU a week from Monday night before coming home a week from Thursday against a good Texas A&M team that's above the Tigers in the standings, so a lot to be determined, and man, that first week back is going to be juicy, isn't it, because those teams are close to Missouri. Yeah, LSU took a loss today, but still sitting at 3-4 and four in the conference, and they're perennially, it seems like, one of those teams that's also a, a bubble, mm -hmm. NCAA caliber kind of squad. You mentioned Texas A&M. They're ranked 24th in the polls right now. They'll probably be moving up after they beat 15th-ranked Kentucky today. Kennedy Carter is at least the best offensive player mm -hmm. in the league, if not the best player in the league, period. She takes a ton of shots for Texas A&M, but she makes a decent <laughs> amount of them also, and she's a really tough guard. So that'll be a really interesting matchup for Mizzou's next home game. LSU, a team that, again, kind of in Mizzou's range, roughly, it looks like in the SEC right now. And you've got to go to Baton Rouge, a place where Mizzou has not had a lot of success yet in their run in the SEC. So another pivotal stretch of games here. It seems like Mizzou has just had back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back to back to back to back to back really challenging games in this league. Life in the SEC, right. certainly on the women's basketball side. Well, uh, one thing we have determined, Sophie Cunningham is uh, one of the great players in program history. 30 points today, and she's so efficient. 9 of 15 from the field. 
60%. 6 of 12 from the three-point arc, 50%. 6 of 8 from the line, 75%. 30 points, she's now number three all-time in, in the scoring list. I don't know if she'll catch numbers one or two. Of course, Joni Davis, Renee Kelly, although it'll be really close if you look at the numbers mm -hmm. probably if she maintains her average. But, I mean, I'm sure you appreciate what you're seeing with one of the great players to ever uh, play the sport at this school. Yeah, I try not to take it for granted. And, you know, Jim Sterk, the athletic director, I'm kind of paraphrasing what he said in a series they had on uh, Mizzou's website. But she said he said that he didn't, could not think of another player who has had more of an impact on her team in his time in college athletics period than Sophie Cunningham has had on Mizzou women's basketball. And it's not just the, the fact that she is such an efficient star player, like you mentioned, but off the court, just as an ambassador and what she's done to just raise awareness and, and get more butts in the seats, quite frankly, at Mizzou Arena. There were more than 5,000 people here today. That's triple what it was for a typical home game before she showed up. So her impact on the court, off the court, it's going to be felt for a long time. Like you said, that all-time leading scorer race is going to be interesting. I mean, if she <laughs> averages about... 20 a game the rest of the way. She'd she, get it. It's going to be close. But that's yeah. a big if. She's right. averaged 16 for the season, which is outstanding. And what's made it tough is that, you know, especially this year, the secret's out about how good she is, and everybody is throwing everything at her. Auburn's an exception because they don't adjust as much to personnel. They're just mm -hmm. 40, 40 minutes of heck pretty much <laughs> against anybody, and that allowed Sophie to have some openings, especially in the first half before they made some adjustments. But a lot of teams throw a lot at her. It's been more challenging for her to get her points this season and still here she is averaging 16 plus points a game about 50 percent from the field 40 percent from three 80 percent from the free throw line amazingly all those numbers are down from her junior year but still for a for a typical human that's pretty darn special well and also what's amazing is as she's going to finish we know for sure now among the top three scoring leaders all time she's going to finish among the top four assists that's incredible. I mean, if you stop and think about it, a player in the history of the program is going to be top four all-time in points and assists. So you're talking about an unselfish superstar, and she may chuckle, anybody may chuckle. But, you know, there's one guy in the NBA who's probably going to go down in history in the top ten in points and assists, LeBron James. Mm -hmm. I mean, Oscar Robertson, I think, is in the top 12 or 13 all-time. LeBron's probably going to get top ten all-time. That's only been done once if he finishes healthy, and we wish him well. In the pros, and you look at what Sophie's doing at this school in those two categories. It's amazing. Top four all time. She's closing in a number four in assists. Well, was that you know when she's scoring so many points and assists, that means obviously the ball's in her hands a lot. And still, with that being said, she's also going to finish you know top five, top six all time and field goal percentage, three point percentage, free throw percentage. So again, even though she's taking a, a high volume of her team's shots, she's putting a lot of them in the basket. So it's not just that she's like, well, quite frankly, hopefully this, this doesn't make it down to College Station, but, you know, Kennedy Carter leads the nation in, in field goals attempted, but she, her percentages are nowhere near what Sophie Cunningham is. And, again, that's what I think makes Sophie a special player. Yeah, no doubt. And the two ahead of her scoring was Joni Davis and Renee Kelly, the only two players that have their jerseys retired. I have a feeling number three may be in the rafters eventually. Real quick before we let you go, mm -hmm. women's basketball, the collegiate level, there's a little bit of parity now, right? At the top, we're talking in the office. I mean, UConn looks human. Can you believe it? You got Notre Dame, Baylor, some of the others, obviously Mississippi State from the SEC. I, I think that's good for the game, and it shows you how the game's improved, right? Notre Dame, number one in the country, loses to an unranked North Carolina team today that Auburn beat, by the way. That, that team <laughs> that Auburn beat just beat Notre Dame, and it had been 198 straight wow. games, I believe, that a number one team had beaten an unranked team. That's and the number six team in the country right now, Stanford, loses to a 21st ranked team in the country, which back in the, you know, even a handful of years ago, the 21st ranked team didn't really have a chance against the sixth ranked team. But you're right, things are, are changing a little bit. And, you know, unless Mizzou really goes on a tear the last month of the year, they're going to be in that five, six, seven, eight seed range in the NCAA tournament. And who knows, maybe if they get hot at the right time in March, they still have an opportunity to make a new plan. Well, you'll be telling us all about it on the Tiger Network Airwaves. Brad, thanks for your time tonight. Always good to see you, Chris. Appreciate it. Brad Trinago, and we're back right after this. Welcome back. Time to answer tonight's sports trivia question. Who did Missouri's Sophie Cunningham pass today for third on Missouri's all-time women's basketball scoring list? Did you know the answer? Here it is. Julie Helm from the state of Indiana scored 1,925 points for Mizzou in the late 90s. Sophie now has 
1928. That's our program. Thank you for watching. Have a great night, everyone. We'll see you here tomorrow night. So long.